Out of the shadows of the cliffs moved a monstrous shambling bulk, an anthropomorphic horror, a grotesque travesty of creation. In general outline, it was not unlike a man, but its face, illuminated in the bright moonlight, was bestial, with close-set ears, flaring nostrils, and a great flabby-lipped mouth, in which gleamed white tusk-like fangs. It was covered with shaggy grayish hair, shot with silver, with shone in the moonlight, and its great misshapen paws hung nearly to the earth. Its bulk was tremendous, as it stood on its short, bowed legs, its bullet head rose above the man who faced it. The sweep of the hairy breasts and giant shoulders was breathtaking. The huge arms were like knotted trees. In the Conan universe, there are as many ape-men as there are servants of the demon god Hanuman, or humans in savage conditions that have received the soft guidance that is his blessing without their knowledge. They occur from a human-like people going through a fictional process called devolution, in which men turn into subhumans over the course of generations due to savage life circumstances, while others are wholly demonic in nature. To cover all of them is therefore impossible. But today, we'll be going over a list of the most unique of these creatures, which highlight their diversity throughout all of Western and Middle Eastern Hyboria. In doing so, we will be referencing time periods from the time of Elder Knight over 65 million years ago, well into the modern age of 10,000 BC. Now let us avoid the Dance of the Four Cobras by repenting for our civilized ways, as Gula awaits. Grimdark. Half off! The oldest of the ape men, and subject to many a fan theory, are the winged apes of the Black Coast. Theorized to be the original children of the demon god Hanuman before the time of Elder Knight, these ape folk reach civilized heights unimagined by man. They are also a clear example of a non-human, fully alien to human evolution race devolving. Over time, their culture of complex lunar rituals, philosophy, and monastic tradition would fall as the first ice age came. Slowly over time, their feathered wings would become more bat-like. Then the tragedy of environmental changes would come for their sanity. Due to organic chemical changes in their water supply, each generation of them would be born more and more savage. Finally, they found themselves in their current state on the Black Coast, being on par if not a bit below the intellect of many similar creature. One of these creatures would be responsible for the death of the Pirate Queen Bullet, one of the only women Conan ever truly loved. Best theorized to be an ape-man offshoot of the four-armed ancient alien ancestors of the Giant Kings, as well as the Giant Kings themselves, are the Scorpion Archers in the ruins of Ket. Marking them as truly unique is their elongated skulls and, in some cases, four arms. They also resemble monkeys instead of gorillas like most ape-men. Their intelligence is clearly much higher than average for devolved humanoids, having a full culture complete with royalty, blacksmiths who make full plate armor, and religious traditions of veneration for an old Acheronian god, very likely related to Jebel Sog and family like Hanuman, known as the scorpion god Selket. Ket is located in the western coast of Stygia. The condition of impishness or impism comes from too much corruption or natural demonic blood being present in a living being. It is marked by having three-fingered hands, three toes, and a bulkier-than-average body. These features, void of the usual deformities present in those transformed into imps, mark the yetis of the exiled lands, which take up north and western Tehran and southeastern Hyperborea as true demon beasts. Their healthy symmetrical features Features, marking them as being bred over multiple generations. Given that a token of friendship can be earned from them, along with Hanuman worshippers being present in the area, we can theorize that these are the guardians of all those who earn the true favor of the ape demon god. This family of yetis includes the gray ape men of the jungle areas, white yetis of the north, and rare black yetis in the same area. Very similar to the gray ape-men of the yetis found in the exiled lands, but void of demonic traits are the various island ape-men Conan encounters in the story Shadows in the Moonlight, which our opening quote of this video is from. Their fur ranges from black to gray, and they possess the normal human five fingers, five toes digit morphology. Noted for their size and upper body strength, very similar to the yetis, they do not possess any form of real culture. It can be best understood that cross-mating between this group and the yetis of the exiled lands resulted in the gray impish ape men that can be found there. These apes we will call iron apes, as they are most frequently encountered on the Isle of Iron Shadows. 
and iron statues in some contexts, depending on what you're reading. This is also a great representation of the most common ape-man type, being called the Hyborian Great Ape or Common Great Ape throughout the world. They come in as many fur colors and sizes as all beasts and men. Named here after their only named member are the Zamoran Thax, featured in the classic Conan story Rogues in the House. While mainstream Zamoran culture has many gods dedicated to pure wickedness in the form of their demon spider god Zath and Bel, the god of thieves, in contrast, the barbarian ape men of Thak's tribe are beholden to an honor culture of battle and freedom. They resemble half human, half gorillas with black to brown fur. By the end of Rogues in the House, Conan has such respect for the way the Beast Man fought that he held a great funeral in his honor, having a very similar value system to himself, saying very clearly, I have slain a man tonight, not a beast. I will count him among the chiefs I have sent into the dark, and my women will sing of him. Thak is displayed as being much stronger than Conan, who only defeats him with aid from another figure. It is said in many versions of the story that he has the strength of twelve men. Issue number two of Conan from the 1970s gives us a look into the ape man of Asgard called Snow Apes. They also refer to themselves as the true beast men. Like the scorpion apes, they have higher than average intellect for ape men and are more upright than either the Thax or winged apes. Like the Thax, they have a warrior culture, but unlike them, they have one totally void of honor. It was through the brutal torture of Asgardian prisoners that they would learn the ways of war and weaponsmithing. After this, they would found the underground city of Brutheim among the ruins of an ancient city that may have been their own human ancestors. Their culture possesses several chieftains who operate under a king. Their naming structure follows a two-syllable structure for the first and last names. Gantor, Zagor, Harlan, and their king, Gakri, are all examples of this found in the comics. Obviously, these ape men possess white fur and are normally man-sized. They frequently enslave humans and force them to fight for their entertainment. They are also known to use human women as sex slaves. Just as the honor culture of the Thax can be contrasted with the wicked culture of Zamora, so too could the dishonor culture of slavery be contrasted with the honor culture of Asgard. Parts of the same eternal lineage that would birth all of Robert E. Howard's great heroes, such as Cole of Atlantis, Conan the Sumerian, and Bran McMorn, are the tragic troglodytes. Marked by pitch black eyes, tusks which jut from their lower jaws, and brown fur, they mark their faces with paint designating different tribal responsibilities and are said to have a similar culture to the Picts of the time. While not true for all troglodytes, many possess a third eye, which is the result of the pineal gland of the brain moving closer and closer to the front as devolution meets mutation. It is worth noting that this eye blinks sideways, as it is smaller and more slanted on shaman cast members. This is also one of the only few types of ape men we have seen to have a dedicated shaman or magic focused cast in their society. Their elongated arms and larger ears giving them more of a chimpanzee appearance if one were relating them to an animal primate. It is best theorized due to their tusks and close habitat to many frost giants that crossbreeding at one point must have occurred between them. Further showing possible evidence of the crossbreeding with frost giants are the valley yetis to the south of the troglodytes which seemingly are two-eyed, hairier, and larger versions of their northern cousins. Their five fingers and five toes show us that they are not demonic like the yetis of the exiled lands. While not having a true culture, they possess the ability for advanced tool use, the desire to take trophies of their victims, which they hang as skulls around their belts, and as just mentioned, the creation of crude clothing from skinned animals and men. They often wield logs from large trees as weapons. The comparison my brain can't avoid making when it comes to both the troglodytes and valley yetis is that they are like the frost giants if the frost giants never learned how to forge metal and were less intelligent. As one travels through the jungles of the Pictish wilderness, King Kong fans will be happy to know both of the bull apes and Gigantolopithecus. While in the real world, these are both classifications for different types of theoretical and real orangutan, in the world of Conan, they are giant gorillas. They vary wildly in intelligence, with some being geniuses such as Conan's first vampire called Varne, who was also a talented necromancer before his great transformation. But most are truly savage beasts, able to be called forth by priests of Hanuman. Often 
and acting as his protective aspect over the priest who conjures him while the Black Skull ritual allows said priest to commune with the dead. These are theoretically the least violent of the ape men, as if they were truly aggressive, there would be no Picts left in the Pictish wilderness. The Isle of Sipta off the coast of Stygia has been home to demonic wars between serpent men, as well as alien influence in the form of eldritch abominations and the intergalactic black matter they seem to always bring with them. This combination of insanely unique circumstances, which result from demonic influence, foreign intergalactic bacteria, and other oddities all tied together through a tropical weather system, has resulted in a thousand unique adaptations for much of its inhabitants. This was also the case for the Horned Giants. As one can guess from their name, these creatures' defining feature, other than being the same size as the Pictish bull apes and Gigantilopithecus, are their enormous bovine-like horns. Like Gigantilopithecus, these apes do not seem to possess any form of higher culture, but unlike them, they do possess more man-ape-like qualities, standing upright on two legs like a Sasquatch. They also possess large canines, both on their top and bottom jaws. Their social hierarchies are based on a simple size differentiation, with the ape men of largest size, both in horns and body, being designated the alpha, and wars for dominance between them being a regular event. For those looking for other oddities to use that are ape-man themed but not immediately connected to the savages we've talked about here, we have included this odd section on those entities that would come up in this family of concepts, but are not truly children of Hanuman's guidance. I have ordered them in degree of weirdness from least to greatest. Zemba was a golden ape worshipped as a false god by cultists. While more of a mutant ape than an ape-man, it shares many of the same mutations as the horned giants minus the obvious ones. While having no supernatural elements about it other than fangs, albinism of the eyes, and the mutant gold fur, it gives us a good insight into how even the most savage of beasts will be held up as a god by some of the more superstitious members of the setting. Lovecraft's cave beast, featured in the story The Beast in the Cave, 1918, is fully complementary to our subject matter today. Despite this story taking place well after the time of Conan, it asks the question of how far devolution can go in only one generation. In the story, a man is tracked through a dark cave by what is in truth merely another man who was lost in the cave before him. Over this time, the stalker has gained night vision, stress has turned his hair white, and surviving in the cave has turned him into a muscular hulk. The savage is killed, and the horror of the story comes from realizing that this was once a human being. Last on our list is an ape man in aesthetics only. This is the great old one known as Ithakwa, who is as much an ape man as Cthulhu is a cuttlefish also called the Wendigo and Windwalker. A deeply Darwinistic entity vaguely resembling a white yeti, the only goal of Ithakwa is to produce an offspring which is stronger than itself. On its ice planet called Borea, it kidnaps many alien species to worship it and aid in this greater pursuit. Due to its form and might makes right mentality, it clearly deserves a spot on this list. Praying to Ithakwa will gift the worshipper with his blessing, making the follower immune to hypothermia and negative effects from cold. This is a very flexible god to use should you choose to have a god that a group of ape men worship who are not a part of mainstream ape man religious tradition as it naturally evolves, or due to its very flexible views and desires, would make a great god for any enemy cult. I know many people were expecting this video to be much longer, but ape men don't have that much complexity to them. They are humans and other races of a sentient nature devolved into their own view of savagery. They contrast with whatever civilized culture surrounds them and are effectively the orcs of the Conan universe. This is especially true for the troglodytes, who remind me a lot of Skyrim's depiction of orcs as more human or ape-like. In some cases, you can even make them green, as the great ape common ape man is prone to more mutations than any normal human or beast as you have witnessed through this list today. I hope this information helped you in some way if you are curious about this topic. As always, my clearly labeled source list and donation links are located below. Have a lovely day.